Hello, everybody. Jim Malone here, coming to you live on Dallas Trading Floor. It is Thursday. It's the 2nd of September, and um, <laughs> the market just keeps powering higher. I just, I kind of, you know, I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit uh, leery here that it has moved up so much, but, you know, we're coming into the uh, traditional uh, Labor Day weekend, at least here in Dallas, and, um, you know, it looks like, uh, you know, the the Nasdaq and the S and P seem to be doing well. So, um, you know, we we kind of want to, um, you know, kind of just keep as fully invested as we can. You know, kind of get uh, invested as we can. And I have some uh, some ideas for you uh, today. And also, um, you know, of course, I'm not going to be here on Monday of next week, obviously, because that is Labor Day weekend, uh, at least here in Dallas. And uh, I won't be I won't be broadcasting. So for next week, it's only going to be four days: uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Um, and of course, so you know, I'll be here tomorrow as well. Uh, and that's going to be the show, obviously, before the uh, Labor Day holiday. Um, so uh, without further ado, let's uh, kind of get into it a little bit here. Uh, okay, let's see. I'm going to bring up my screen share here. There we go. Let's see if I can. Get that. There we go. So here we go. All right. So basically, here we are. Um, you know, the stock market just keeps advancing higher. I mean, it's just uh, it's fairly incredible that it has gone this. It's gone like this. Uh, but there you go. I have two breakout stocks that I kind of want to bring to your attention. I don't. I haven't really gone over these. Uh, and then I want to show you the stock of the day. Interestingly enough, we see that uh, Denbury Research is starting. It, it, it's come through this double bottom. It's getting ready. It's got a very high composite rating and the price of oil went up again. So, you know, we do have this oil inflation. It seems like uh, this one is very good currently. Uh, it's up $3.40 today, 5% up. It's got a double bottom buy point of 73.30. So we're at 73.62. So we're right above the buy point. So this one you pop, this one is actionable right now. Uh, and it is the one of the first stocks to regain the 50-day line. Of course, that's this red line here. I don't know if you can see it, uh, and that's very significant. This has had a huge run, basically, um, you know, from about November time frame. But this is one you want to probably put uh, on your uh, radar screen here. It's Denbury Research. D-E-N is the symbol. I have two other breakouts that I'd like to bring to your attention. Now, I have not bought Denbury Research. It just came on to my uh, radar screen. So I haven't bought it, uh, but I'm definitely looking at it because I do like the category. I do think that with inflation, we're going to see some uh, some strong growth in some of these oil stocks once again. Um, also, interesting um, interesting breakout today. I kind of wanted to, to uh, uh, get your attention to Signet Jewelers. And this is interesting because these are one of the largest mall-based um, um, uh, jewelry stores. Now, retail has been doing extremely well. So again, I don't own this one, but I can tell you this, there's an $83 buy point. It's looking very strong. It pulled above the buy point. We're trying to see exactly um, where it's going to settle, but if it settles above that $83, it's right in the buy zone. And see, it's, it's a cup basis, but this one is a little bit more tricky. I probably wouldn't buy this one. Probably wait maybe uh, two or three days to see if it can hold this this 83 line. If it can, then it's successful. It successfully moved over that pivot. But just kind of want to put this on your radar screen. It's Signet Jewelers, and uh, the the group it's in is 18 out of 197. So it's a, so it's in the top 20 percent currently of the market, and that's a very very good thing. We're trying to buy obviously in the in the highest uh, up in the market we can, and this one seems to be doing well. Signet Jewelers, another one I'm kind of kind of show you. Though this is an IPO, and typically I don't recommend IPOs until uh, they've gone through about three months because we need to always form that IPO base, and it typically takes three months to do it. But this one broke out today. Very interesting. I'm not familiar with this one. It's called Meridian, Meridian Link, and what they do is they they do credit scoring, um, somewhat like um, Upstart. There's a bunch of companies in this in this uh, in in this space, 
This one seems to be doing very, very well. It IPO'd at 26 basically a month ago. It's currently at 27.29. When it IPO'd, of course, it moved very quickly up and then it pulled back. But now it seems to have strength. Now, if it can if it can stay above this buy point, you know, the buy point being about 2680, uh, then I think it might be a potential. Uh, but I probably wouldn't buy this one either because it's it's uh, earnings in five days. So, but I would put this on my radar screen. Put this on my watch list. Why? Because I think this one could be very good. It's uh, called Meridian Link. It just came out. I wouldn't buy it today because we're coming into earnings and it is an IPO, but let's see if this one can do something. So just kind of want to put that on your radar screen there. Meridian Link and of course, Signet Jewelers. Now I'm going to kind of show you kind of what I currently am holding in in the way of um, in, in the way of stock. So maybe I can get this a little bit as big as I can so you can see it. Um, definitely had some comments that uh, some of my some of my uh, screens are not big enough. And I definitely agree. I looked, I went back and looked at this last night and, uh, you know, it was enough for me to see a lot of these things. So I had to kind of blow these things up. So hopefully you can see these. Uh, Apple, I'm in Apple. It's up 99 cents. Not a lot. The key level, of course, 150 on that. So I do think, you know, if you're, if you're in this one, I think it's, I think it's good. We're, we're a little bit shy. Uh, you know, I, I, this is kind of a slow, but sure, uh, wins the race. If I were to buy this one now, I would put my stop loss right about 149.50, right below that 150, um, pivot that we have on it. I'm in Berkshire Hathaway. It's down just, just almost nothing. 39 cents. This is of course, Warren Buffett's company. And if you want to get broad exposure, especially to the consumer cyclicals, this is a good one because uh, instead of just buying one or two computer cyclicals, this is sort of my hedge position, Berkshire Hathaway, because I typically am a growth stock investor mostly. So I use Berkshire Hathaway kind of to balance out the portfolio. Uh, this has been a very steady performer. Typically, they're invested in large cap stocks, for instance, uh, Kroger and that kind of thing. The, the reason I don't like to buy these stocks directly is because they typically are very slowly moving, but they're but they're very defensive, and that's why I have Berkshire. Um, Macy's, uh, again, it's it's up again. This has been sort of one of the retail survivors. It's in a very good space. I've done very well with Macy's. Um, I bought it about 18. It's a little bit extended right now, so I probably would not be a buyer at this level, but again, I'm in Macy's. Uh, one that I have been adding to, and I kind of want to point this out here is a shipping line and this is very unusual for me as well i typically don't buy shipping lines uh, but uh, this one i definitely i definitely like and and that's matson lines and it's based in um honolulu hawaii and they basically service of course california hawaii and um, a lot of the asia pacific they actually uh they actually ship to guam and 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 micronesia and a lot of interesting places but it's one of the only uh, American flag uh, shipping lines, and that's very critical because American lines, uh, um, um, American shipping companies, have certain advantages when it comes to so certain trade routes that other foreign carriers don't have. So I'm in Matson Lines, been doing quite well. It's up two dollars and three cents today. Uh, the price change, it's up about two point five three percent, or about two dollars. So 82.36 a share. Um, down a little bit on NVIDIA. I did trim a little bit on one of my positions on NVIDIA. I have this in about four portfolios. Uh, I did trim down to where I had uh, basically three full positions. I had more than three full positions in one of my portfolios with NVIDIA. I did trim it a little bit today. It's down just absolutely very slightly, 0.88. I still pretty much believe in the stock. Now, something that did come across the wires was that... Um, um, uh, Kathy Woods has been trimming NVIDIA. She sold uh, quite a bit of shares in this, um, so you might want to take a note of that. I am I am still a little bit more bullish on NVIDIA than than that. So I definitely I think that you know this is going to probably at least move up to uh, probably 250. Now I could be wrong on this, and I have my stop losses set basically at 199.50, right under 200. On this one, but I do have a stop loss on it. But uh, I, I have been in Nvidia, and it has been done doing quite well. St Micro again, it's just it, it just incrementally moves up. It seems like every day, it's not a huge company, but it is doing very well. St Micro, Microchip Technologies. I did trim this one a little bit. I'm just you know I I, I felt that I was overweight in some of the chips. I do have a spread on AMD as well. Don't own the physical shares on that one. So I just kind of wanted to trim down a little bit on some of my positions. Uh, some of my chip positions. 
Also wanted to show you the other positions that I'm in. Of course, Palantir. Uh, I've I've been I've I've been aggressively uh, moving into this position. It's up today, 27 cents a share, or about one percent. Uh, so this one, I do believe this is a good place to buy it. We're still in the buy zone with Palantir PLTR. So that seems to be working right now, and I'm going to add it add to it until I get to about to two full positions on this, I suspect. I don't know. I'm, I'll make the decision as it moves, but I have been adding to this one, uh, Palantir. Uh, Robert Half, this is the temporary staffing company, doing well as well. It's up about 62 cents. Uh, Goldman is uh, kind of hanging in there. It seems like, you know, any, you know, I bought it right about 400 and I've been in it uh, since, but I suspect this will, this will move higher. Now, Goldman GS is a little bit different than some of the other um, the, the other money center banks, and that is it makes most of its money trading. For some reason, and I don't, and I did put this out, by the way, I'm going to be putting out the ready list uh, for everybody that's on the action trade alerts tonight. And Trex was on there, and I've, I've had this for a while. It's done very well for me. It's a plastic lumber company. They make, they make uh, I guess, out of old milk, uh, uh, milk bottles and that kind of thing. They make this plastic lumber, and it seems to be great. And everyone really seems to like it. It's up $2.62, so it's doing quite well. Adcor, this is another industrial name. Uh, 92. Then I'm in Perkin, Perkin Elmer, and that seems to be kind of revving back to life. I really like Perkin Elmer. Perkin Elmer is a very interesting company in that it is a company that most September typically is one of the worst months for the stock market. So we're coming up to probably the worst month in the year for the stock market. But one thing that's very interesting is Perkin Elmer has over the last five years increased in value in this period. So I definitely it's definitely starting to do its thing. I'm down a little bit in Square. I don't know about Square, uh, but I'm down in it. So that's kind of gives you a, a, a look see kind of on what I am currently, um, you know, I'm 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 currently in here. So uh, without further ado, um, let's get to some of the questions. Thank you very much for holding on here, and let's go to the first question. Thank you. Um, what's any thoughts on EPD? I'm not familiar with EPD, so. Let's see if I can move over to that. Let's see if I can. Okay, there we go. EPD. All right, so let's go to EPD. And this is what I have for EPD, Enterprise uh, Products Partners, um, natural gas production. Very interesting. I don't know a lot about this one. The oil and gas pipeline, this is one of the few areas of the um, the oil the oil business right now that is not doing as well. And But but this may be kind of a place that, you know, we might start to look at it because it does look like it's bounced off of that 200-day line. But right now, this is not a area that probably is the best it's got a relative strength of 43 and what do i mean by that well if you look at this little blue line here and you draw a line across it you will see that it from basically here which is november of last year through today basically this stock has underperformed the s p 500 because this is the s p 500 this blue line and this of course is where the where where this this is currently so right now this stock is underperforming the s p 500 and it's right at the the 200 day average now typically this can be a good place to buy what i'm going to do here is i'm going to put a reversal line on it to see now it, you it th this is this is a secondary buy point in that it um it, it basically it's a secondary buy point let me see if i can put it on that and and if it moves above this line then you could possibly start considering it uh as 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 a stock i've put an alert on that currently the enterprise products partners is in a downtrend and it's it's right at the 200 day line so i wouldn't be buying this one it also has a 56 checklist so i would be a little bit careful on this one at this point you know you don't want to necessarily um reject it out of hand but i don't think that this one is um you know, it, it's basically ready to buy. So here's what I would do with this one. I would watch list this one. Um, so that, I mean, that's basically it. I would, I would watch this, this one, uh, and wait until it moves higher. Now, 
Um, where would it move higher? Well, it's got to move above that reversal line that we had up there. So let's kind of see where that reversal line is, 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 is. And right now that reversal line is about 23. So if this can move and close above about 2350, and I'm going to put a, an alert on here in 2350, then I think we could possibly start looking at it going into it. But right now we have to watch this, this one. It's just not ready to go. And, um, yeah, I mean, that's just, you just got to, you just got to deal with it like that. So I would not recommend this one at this time. Um, all right. Okay. This is a question on one of the cryptos. Um, let's see. Um, what about X? I would like your, to ask you about XRP. The XRP. X, okay. So this is, this is one of the crypto coins. I'm probably going to, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to do a little bit on crypto here in, in a few minutes. But right now, uh, basically, uh, I'm going to just get back to some of the other questions. And let's see. And this is on KLIC. KLIC. Yeah, this is K, KLI 10 core, I believe. Uh, KLIC. It's the company I think it is. No, Kufr. Okay, so this is in the, this is in the, um, this is definitely in the uh, semiconductor production equipment space. Very good space. Uh, but it is extended right now. Currently, um, this is extended. So I wouldn't, if you, if, if this was a first buy in here, I would not do it. I, I, I would not, I would not do it here because it is, this is extended. So, you know, I think that you've got to be a little bit careful of that. Um, but, uh, you know, the, the stock is extended. And what do I mean by extended? Well, what I mean by extended is that the correct buy point is right here. And I want to kind of show you that that's, that's this cup with handle third stage cup with handle. So the correct, the, the correct buy point is on this 5750 currently it's at 7281. So we are essentially extended. We are extended. So really you, you the, the, the ideal place to buy it is between there and there from about that, um, uh, that uh let's see from about that point up to here that's really where you want to buy it is in is in this is in this area we're currently a little bit too far above this now it does form another cup and so it is it is going to move higher so i wouldn't be initiating a position here uh also we are quite far off of that 10-day line so right now i think you just have to watch this the stock is extended uh, right now. So I would not recommend an entry at this level because there's a high, you know, there's a potential that it can pull back basically to that pivot. So I would be a little bit careful here and I would not buy at this level because the, the setup is, it's a good company, but the setup just doesn't work uh, right now. All right. Uh, this is for Sa from Samuel. Can we buy DE shares uh, at this price? Will it go lower in the coming weeks? Well, that's a great question. Uh, I did do a spread, by the way, for everybody out there, I did do a very nice um, bull put spread on deer, and it seems to be doing well. Uh, but let's let's look in on the deer shares. This is one. This is a stock that typically does very very well in September. So I want to be I want I want to be clear on that. Now um, you can, and I'm going to draw I'm going to draw a reversal line here. But basically, this is totally viable right now. You see, this is the reversal line. Let's set that alert on that reversal line. Okay, so this we 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 can buy this right now, uh, absolutely right now. Now, I entered this bull put spread, and you can see the I entered that yesterday. And part of the reason I did that was I could see this line coming down and then bouncing off this 21 day line. That's where I entered the spread, and of course, as it moves higher, it will do better. So that is one that that is definitely one way of looking at it. But I can say this right now. Uh, you know, this is absolutely clear to buy. So, um, you know, with the DE shares, uh, you know, I think, you know, I think, you know, DE uh, is viable right now. So that's kind of what I, that's, um, that's kind of what I'd like to say about that. It's definitely viable right now. So DE deer it's viable right now. It's viable right at this level. It's right below the pivot, the pivot 388.52. It is about as close to that as you can get 384.95. 90, 
it, it went up today and it's continuing its march up. We're seeing some very nice volume coming in here. So I do believe that, that right now John Deere is in an uptrend. So I think that we could definitely, we could definitely be buying John Deere right now. I, I, I think it's very, very uh, buyable. I'm of course, I, I have uh, a spread on, I probably will, I, you know, I, I probably will start adding physical shares, but it's a very good stock right now. And I think it will be for the next month or so at least, but right now it's totally viable. So that's something that you might be able to, to take advantage of. Um, Tim L and he's looking at net. I think this is CrowdStrike. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Cloudflare, excuse me. <laughs> Cloudflare, not CrowdStrike, excuse me. Cloudflare. Um, this one, unfortunately, is a little bit extended, Tim. Here's my here's my take on that. The correct buy point was 95.77. So we are extended above the proper buy point. Now, that said, it did come down and test the 21-day line. I'm just going to kind of show you that. That's this green line here. And you can see what it does is it comes down and it tests and it bounces. And that's very good as it, as it moves higher. So can we buy this at this level? I would not buy this at this level. This is a little bit too, uh, this is a little bit too extended. It's in it right now. There's a lot of uh, action coming into the computer software enterprise group. This area has been kind of asleep since February. It's starting to wake up again. So um, would I buy Cloudflare at this level? No, I probably would not. I would not buy it at this level because it's extended. So the stock is extended and, and really we can't buy it at this level. We've got to rate for that proper enter, entry. Proper entries in, in, in buying stock are so important because it's not enough just to have the right stock. You've got to have the right entry into the stock and that's what's so critical. And so, um, uh, you, you know, so that's what's that's what's so critical about this is having that um, ha having that um, not only the right stock, but the right entry, the right entry into the in, the right entry into the in, into the right stock. So that's the that's the key, um, you know, with buying stock. We, we can't just buy it uh, just to buy it. A good stock is, is it's good to have a good stock, but it also is so important to buy it as it is coming into a good buy point. So right now with this one for Cloudflare, symbol NET, this is extended, so I don't recommend buying it at this level. Uh, it's a little bit past where it needs to, needs to buy it. The, the proper buy point on this one was 95.77. So thank you very much for that um, for that comment. Uh, that's, a, that's a good one. So let's look at C Limited. This is another one that has been doing fantastic this year. This is a Southeast Asian internet company based in Singapore. Um, this one also is extended, unfortunately, as well. Um, and so it's kind of unfortunate because, you know, and I want to kind of zoom in a little bit on it. Uh, we, we, we get the correct buy point on this one, 278.10. So I, we, I, this one is also extended. So I think you've got to be careful when you buy it. Now, of course, you can buy an extended stock. I mean, absolutely, you can buy an extended stock. But the problem when you buy an extended stock is they have a tendency to pull back to the pivot. Okay, so we got to be we we got to be careful when we're buying extended. See, the pivot, this little line here, this is sort of support. So even if it's going up, then it can pull back right down to that level of support. So with this one, we probably don't want to buy it. It's a little far extended. And I think it's a little bit tough to buy it at that level. But the correct buy point on that was 278. It's a good stock and it rates very well. SE Limited, it's got a 78 checklist, which is excellent, but it's extended. And I just wouldn't, I just don't like to buy extended stocks. It can be very deadly to your <laughs> bottom line. You can be in all the right stocks and then buy them extended and they'll pull back to the, to the, uh, to the, to the, um, uh, to to the proper buy points, and then you sit there going, "Wow, I, I'm in the right stock, but why did it, you know, why did it do this to me?" So, not a good idea to buy stocks extended. Uh, that's just the main thing. Thanks, Matt. Let's look at SIG, and let's see if I can give you an answer on that. On that one, Signet Jewelers. Thank you. Uh, I did put this one out, uh, Matt, uh, today. This is buyable. <laughs> absolutely viable and you see this little little blue dot that means that this one 
for some reason, and why, I don't know. Well, actually, I do know. These guys had tremendous earnings. Look at that. Earnings per share up 416%. Let's kind of look to see how they've been doing. This is a good time possibly to buy Signet. We're coming into the strongest months of the year. This, you know, the, the holiday seasons, they tend to do really well. Their sales were up 101% and their profits, and this is the key, up 416%. So I think, you know, this may be the year that they do very, very well. Signet, of course, has a number, a number of different brands. I think they have K Jewelers and I don't know, I don't know all their brands, but they're, they're very, very big. Um, and, um, you know, there's, it's a very big company and uh, they do very well. The relative strength line is 98. You can't do much better than that. Look at this. And, uh, and I want to show you this, this tremendous relative strength line. I'm going to draw this relative strength line. The relative strength of this stock is at an all time high. So <laughs> what my charts are telling me here, <laughs> what my charts are telling me here and look, there's an increasing volume. So we definitely like to see that the volume is going up. And the price is going up at the same time. So that's a very good thing. This is totally viable at this level. And, um, you know, it may pull back a little bit, you know, it may pull back a little bit, but this is a cup, first stage cup with a buy point of 83. And currently it's at 85. So it's definitely within the buy zone right now. And this is viable. Now, if you do decide to buy this one, be careful. Always put a stop loss in. This is the key. Even if you buy it here, I would recommend possibly putting, if you did buy it at this price, I would recommend putting in a stop loss at about 77 uh 10 or or so and why because that's where the 10 day line is and that's good there's some good support there and it's right under where there's some support so right now signet jewelers it's 100 percent viable right now you can buy it if you do buy it at this price put that stop loss in about 77 10 i think you'd be very happy that's not that uh, the the stock is trending well and it's uh you know it's the retail wholesale jewelry is doing very well retail right now it's doing very well. And the wholesale jewelry category, um, you know, it's mostly Signet. This is the number one stock, obviously, in that group. But it's doing very, very well. It's uh, this, this group, this is 18 out of 197, definitely in the top part of the market. So very good thing to possibly look at. But Signet is, 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 is viable right now. So thanks for that question, uh, Matt. Really appreciate it. Hello, Jim. I know penny stocks <laughs> isn't your thing, but can you have a look? Okay. I, I'm not saying I dislike penny stocks, but here's the thing I do put out. I put out a list of strong, what I consider penny stocks, anything below $10, I consider penny stock. The reason, the reason I, I, I'm not against penny stocks per se, but the problem with penny stocks is most of the time, what makes it, it, people are confused on what makes a stock go up. Typically what makes a stock go up are, institutional investors, investors that are uh, in institute, you know, from institutions that, um, that invest in something. And they typically will not invest in a stock below the price of $10. So let me see if I can get this I N P X. Is that the symbol? So let's see. Um, okay. It's a $1 stock. <laughs> so, you know, actually, you know, um, actually uh, this is, this, I, I, I wouldn't buy this stock. Uh, even even <laughs> even if it was one dollar, <coughs> and why wouldn't I buy it? Well, let's kind of do let's kind of get a twenty thousand um, uh, foot view here. Look at this stock. Now I'm what I'm doing is I'm looking at the monthly chart, and if you can see, this this company started back in two thousand and eighteen, and guess what? It's gone down <laughs> since two thousand eighteen. It may be turning around. <clears throat> you know, I don't know if you saw that. You know, I don't know if you remember the uh, Monty Python thing. You know, it's, it's dating me, but Monty thing. Oh, he isn't dead yet. Well, it, this isn't quite dead yet. It might, it might revive itself. <clears throat> but right now, I just wouldn't buy this thing. I don't know why. Uh, this is uh, data analysis, <clears throat> cybersecurity. Um. Okay. Relative strength sixteen. Not liking it. Um. 200 day moving average below that not liking it so i i can't i can't see a reason to buy this one i'm sorry I, i'm sorry to be such a negative nelly here yeah a 56 checklist uh they did have some 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 increase in sales that's interesting but they're still losing money and they're under a dollar gosh i just don't think i could be i just don't think i could 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 recommend this one in uh, with with a, with a straight face i yeah i don't i don't think i could recommend this one with a straight face unfortunately yeah i think this this is a penny stock and 
you know, good luck. I mean, I hope that I hope that you make money on it, but I wouldn't be an investor in this one. I just wouldn't. I'm just afraid that it might go from a dollar to fifty cents. <laughs> That's what I'm afraid of. That's what I'm afraid of a lot of times. A lot of times in here. Okay, so let's go to the next question. Uh, hello, Jim. Oh, that's the penny stock. <laughs> Thank you. All right, uh, let's look at UMC. UMC is a, a Taiwanese stock, and what it is is it's second only to Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing as a foundry. Very interesting stock. Not as much. Uh, I think I think the Taiwanese government has a large stake in this one. Um, so it's kind of an interesting interesting company. It's, it's a it's it's a quality stock, even though it's only eleven dollars. Um, it trades us in ADR. I believe it trades on the Taipei Exchange. I believe that is it's one you know trades on the Taipei Exchange. Um, it's it, electric. They're 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 basically a foundry. Basically, you go to this company with your design, and they'll make it for you, based in Taipei, and uh, good relative strength. Um, you know, but I just I you know it's got a hundred percent checklist, so that's looking. Very good. You know, this is not a bad stock. This is this is not a bad stock. They, I think they just reported, yeah, twenty one percent up in sales, one hundred percent up in profits. So that's really good. Um, it's, uh, yeah, there it is. Taiwanese manufacturer of IC wafers for the telecom, consumer electronics, and memory market. So basically, this is a contract fab. It's a uh, and and they do very well. So it's a, it's a well run company uh, with a hundred percent checklist in a good sector. So uh, you know, I think. Um, you, you know, I, I think that w that's a, um, you know, that's a potential. Uh, that's, that's a potential here. Would I buy it at this level? Well, let's take a look. Um, you know, I don't, you know, it's, it's, it, it's, it, my pattern recognition is saying that it's based, it's broken out of this consolidation. And it's still in the buy zone. So, you know, you could possibly go in with a, with a half or a quarter position on this one. Um, you know, you could, you could definitely do that. I mean, I think this is looking very good. Now, here's what I would do if I did buy it. I would now with with stocks that are this inexpensive, you've got to be you're gonna you're gonna they're gonna be a little bit more volatile in terms of percentage. But I would if I did go into this one, I'd probably put my stop loss in there at about 9:45 is where I'd put it. About about right here is where where I would put it in. But yeah, I mean this this one isn't bad. And again, it's you know it's just right about. Uh, you know, it's it's almost in penny stock land, but it's uh it's uh, it's a little bit higher than that. Let's look at this funds. Traditionally, this these haven't had a lot of fund sponsorship, but this does have 89 funds in it. And let's look at this fund sponsorship. Yeah, these are emerging emerging market funds or Vanguard. So I'm very high in Vanguard. I mean, they they have some very good stuff. Yeah, uh, Global Dynamics. Yeah, so Invesco, Invesco um Oppen, Invesco Oppenheimer Global. That's a good that's a good fund. So there's some a lot of inter international funds in this one. So yeah, I, I would say I would say that's a definitely a go on that uh, on that one. I like that. I like that chart very very much. Um, let's look at the Marcus uh, uh, is writing in about the Apple October options. Let's kind of see what's the where the action is for that for Apple. You can pull up the Apple chart and see. Okay. Well, uh, these are the Apple, the Apple. I'm going to pull up in the the options. Let's see if we can let's see if we can find out about the options here. I just want to kind of see what is selling. Okay, there's a lot of open interest in the September 21st 155. Okay, that's interesting. A lot of open interest on that one. Um, just looking at these open interest. So it seems like the 155 is where most of the action is there's some interest at the 150 but it looks like that 150 call it looks like that 150 155 call is sort of what people are looking at the 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 um the uh the uh september 21st 155 call looks to be where most of the action is on this so hmm okay so yeah i mean i think I would probably be a seller of this. I'm not sure, but yeah. So, so uh, what's you know what would you buy? Well, um, I don't know if you're going to make a lot on it, but there seems to be a lot of demand for the 155 call. So I think that if you just would do a naked call, now I wouldn't do a naked call on this myself. I would do a spread. I would probably do a put spread on it and not a call spread. But 
on this one, the 155, uh, September 21st, that's the one that people seem to be buying. And so that's where the demand is. Um, so if you were to be a buyer of that, that, that one might be a good strike price. Um, you might want to go a little bit lower than that, or maybe 150. Uh, you know, you probably want to go with the 150, I think, rather than 155, even though the most open interest is at the 155 strike. So that's kind of my, um, <laughs> my log and my short on it. Uh, but I would probably not do a naked on this one. I would probably, unless you wanted to acquire the stock. So that's another thing too. Um, you know, that might be a good, that might be a good way. If you're, if you're willing to, uh, to, to buy in on the stock, that might be a very good idea. Um, would be possibly to sell a cash secured put, maybe a one, a, a one fifty or one fifty five put. If you were to sell, let's see, one fifty five, uh, and it, it went down below one fifty five, which it, which it could, you would have to buy the stock. But that might be a very good way too. Would be to sell a uh, one fifty or a one fifty five. Uh, oct um, uh, September 21st uh, put that might be another way to go on this one so kind of interesting that that's kind of my take on now that if you're going to do it naked I think that the cash secured put can be a good way you'd have to have fifteen thousand dollars in your account because of course you if you if you did get exercised you would have to uh, it, you, you know the, the you would you would be put to and that would that would cost about fifteen thousand. For those shares, about 100 shares, but I, I definitely think with Apple, that's not that much of a risk. Uh, with the 150 or the 155, let's look at the Jets. And of course, that's a that's an ETF. So uh, let's see, there we go. Okay, this is Jets. This is the um, uh, U.S. Globe. This is the exchange traded fund, and uh, it basically is. Um, yeah, it's an ind it's an index seeking fund. You know, I I don't know with this one. I you know relative strength of twenty one, downward trend. I I don't know. I I'm not. I probably not as bullish on this one. If um let's let's check in to see. Let's take a to see what the QQQ is doing. Um, that's the one. I that's the, currently the ETF that I have. It's the QQQ. Um, you know that one's just kind of just 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 moving up there. Um, so my guess on this one, I don't know about, I don't know about that. I probably would not be in the, uh, jets. I, I, I don't, you know, I probably would not be in jets, uh, like right now. All right. Um, okay. Uh, Apple October calls price target for, I, I can't give you an, I, I have to go into, I'd have to go into my, um, my options chain to find that. And unfortunately I can't bring that up, Mark, unfortunately, um, but uh, I think that your 150 and 155 strikes are going to be the best on that. Uh, let's take a look at AMD. Now I have a spread on AMD. Uh, I do own some of the, uh, and I, which I have not closed. Uh, it is up. Uh, this tends to be still in this kind of this tight region. Let me kind of show you, bring up that chart. The um, kind of zoom in on this a little bit. Oops. Um, I'm just zooming. I'm just zooming in on up on the uh, on the so it gets easier to see on the screen. This is a uh, this is the chart for AMD, and it, and this is the weekly chart here. So this is essentially um, what um, this is essentially a three week tight. So we have one, two, three, four. So I do believe it's right at the 21 day line. So it does look like based on this chart. Oops. It do, it does look like based on this chart that and I want to kind of put that in there. Yeah, there we go. All right. It it's it's not being cooperative with me. All right. Basically, what's happening is that the volume is decreasing. That means people are holding. It's a tight pattern. This is going to break out. Um, uh, AMD is very very likely to break out. So you know, if to profit from this move, you might want to consider. Possibly doing a um, um, a, uh, a buy stop limit order. Let me uh, let me uh, zoom back down on this one. But as you can see, there's a there's a um, right at about 122 level. There is a 
and I want to set an alert at that. I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete that. I'm going to set an alert at uh, 122. And the reason I am is for this because this is probably where you want to buy it as it moves above this 122. And it is going to, it's getting ready to, because this is a three week, three week tight pattern. As you can see, railroad tracks there, decreasing volume. So this one is getting ready to break out. Don't know if this is going to happen after um, earnings, but this is this could very well break out. I would buy this above 122 on the breakout. So that might be something that uh, that that uh, that you that you could look at. Um, currently, it's got this is this has got a hundred percent checklist, so it doesn't get any better than this in terms of the checklist. Uh, AMD is performing very, very nicely. They came through earnings. Their their sales were up 99%, and their um, profits, and this is the key, were up uh, 259. Now they're basically two stocks. There's two really premier chip stocks, of course. One being um, AMD, uh, one being uh, Nvidia, and the other one being AMD. So I definitely think that you know this is looking like it's probably going higher. So. Could you buy it at this level? Well, it is extended. If this is your first buy in this, it's a little bit extended from this level. But uh, I think you possibly could buy it at this level. Um, I think you possibly could buy it at this level. It does look like it is going to move higher based on what I'm seeing in what I'm seeing in the chart pattern. What, what I'm seeing in the chart pattern, I think it probably will move higher. Obviously, it won't confirm the move until it moves about above 122. It's currently. 109 so it's it's kind of right at that it's just a little bit extended from the top of the buy zone so this is definitely buyable uh, it's not an ideal place to buy um amd but it's looking very good actually it's looking very very good and thank you i'm actually i'm actually going to write this one down because i do have the spread on it but i may want to start um, acquiring some physical shares because i do think this is looking quite good quite quite good um all right so let's see uh can we buy oil stocks uh as, yes i think so and the one to buy by the way is the one i brought up earlier and that's denbury research look at this one den and you know as inflation kicks in i'm gonna th we're gonna see more interest in in oil and, and you know you are absolutely right with oil being at 70 i mean it's likely to go much higher uh this is the probably the stock that you want. Uh, at least you know there's a lot of good ENP stocks, but in terms of the ones that you want to kind of take a look at, let me just uh, let me just put the the reversal line in here. This is the one you probably want to buy because it's just moved above the reversal line. I'm going to put that in. Uh, yeah. uh, this is just moved above. This is just moved above the reversal line. Let's see if that'll let me do it. Yeah, there we go. This has just moved above the reversal line that I put in here, and it looks as like it's going to move up to this uh, 84 level. So we've got a pretty good, pretty good run here. This probably has at least uh, a run of about 10. So we're going to see it probably move like this in this direction to the upward side because it's bounced. It 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 found that the the bottom at 60.45, and now it's taking its ride up probably to about 84.37. That's the top of the consolidation. So I definitely think this is the one you could probably buy right now. As a matter of fact, I'm considering it as well. This is going to be probably the move in here. I'm just kind of drawing draw my terrible handwriting there. But that's probably going to be the move right there. We definitely can do that. And if it moves above that uh, 8437, then it's even going to move higher. So we're seeing some very nice action on the oil stocks. And if you're, if you're interested in, in, uh, you know, you know, in the oil stocks, this is one that you might want to put on your list. Um, you know, you know, right now this is this is one of the best ones in the in, in the oil stock area. I want to go to the. Uh, I want to look at. Uh, I, I want to look at the the entire group, and see which ones are the top stocks. Denbury is right at the top. So 98 relative strength, 97 earnings per share. So you want to buy the top ones. The other one you could possibly look at is Matador. Let's look at Matador really quickly. It's not as good a chart pattern as Denbury. So right now, if you're looking to buy an oil stock, and I definitely think that's a good area uh, because we're starting we're starting to see, again, some more strength in this area as crude moves above 70. Denbury Resources, this is not a bad place to buy it. 
Um, uh, this this is this is not a bad place to write. Let me put up the, the correct chart. The correct chart, of course, is for Denbury. This is a good place to buy it. This is what they call a low cheat. It's not as good as buying it off of off a of proper base, but this is a reversal, and I definitely think this is where you could buy it. So, um, Farouk, this is a uh, definitely uh, something that you might want to look at. Denbury Resources symbol D E N on that one. So great. Yeah, there we go. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, this is dead. I, 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 I think it's a very good stock right now. I did bring it up in my kind of my little monologue for what it's worth. I'm trying to get better at those things. You know, I'm, I'm certainly not Johnny Carson or, or uh, somebody like that, but <laughs> I'm trying to get better. But Denbury Resources, this is a very good one. It's the stock of the day. Uh, and, I, and let's, let's kind of look at also, I want to go back to that slide uh, so that so that we can we can we can see it. Um, but I, I want to show you the the uh, slide for that. Let's see if I have. Yeah, there we go. So I'm going to I'm going to go back to the slide for there we go. This is the this is our stock of the day. Denbury resources and it really is set up nicely. Again, the composite rating 98 out of 99. That's excellent. The industry group, it's it's in the top 60%. That's uh, that's very good. 75 out of 197. It's got this double bottom pattern. This is an extremely good pattern. It's one of the best patterns. Probably even better a little bit than the cup with handle. The double bottom bottom pattern. The price of oil is going up. It has a 73.30 entry on this. We're at 73.62. This is totally viable right now. Uh, so this is a good stock, and it's a good entry point. It's, 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 it's not enough just to have a good stock, obviously. We want to have a good entry as well. All right, let's look at Palantir. This is a stock that I currently own. Uh, I have been increasing my um, I have been increasing my exposure to Palantir uh, based on the fact that I do think that it is potentially a trillion dollar company. Now a lot of people have said this, but um, I've been can kind of going through it, and it's just there. There's something about this company that you know is potentially very, very compelling. And I have been adding positions, as you can see. I bought a half position here. I added here. We're still kind of in a tight pattern. We'll see if this if it holds. But right now, uh, it's uh, it's selling at a 26.49. So it was all the way up here at 45. Um, it then, you know, pulled back, but I do think we're building this base, we're basing, and I do think it's probably moving higher because I'm seeing some very good action, very good action on it. They went through earnings, uh, there were, their sales were up 300%. So let's check that. Yeah, here we go. No, not only that, their, their sales were up 49%, but their profits were up 300%. Uh, we still are obviously a growth company. It's still losing money, but it is the, the steady, uh, steady profit growth every quarter. And if you got 20% more than um, uh, per, per quarter, that's what you want to see. So I definitely like this. Remember, you know, you want to buy on both fundamentals and technicals, and you want to sell just on technicals. But fundamentally, this is a good story, and technically it's a good story. So this one might be a good place. And you definitely can buy Palantir at this level. So Palantir at 2649, where it is right now, is buyable. And uh, I think that you'd be very pleased with this. Uh, I'm currently um, uh, putting it into my portfolios because I do think it has some very good uh, potential. Let's look at Shoe Carnival. This is one of my favorites, uh, SCVL. And for some reason, <laughs> why I don't know, <laughs> Shoe Carnival seems to be doing good. It does have a little bit of an issue, of course, with this... this um, uh, the, the, this uh, pivot here, and the pivot is right about 40. We're currently right below that 39, uh, th 37.95. But look at these, these. This is good numbers. I mean, their sales are up 10%, but what's key is their profits are up 340%. And this is in a business of selling shoes. I mean, what could be more pedestrian than this? Well, I do like this. 56% owned by funds. Very nice cash flow. Return on equity, 5%. This is, this is checking a lot of boxes. Now, of course, this is not going to be, you know, this is not a Tesla or anything like this. They're a shoe store. I mean, let's just say it for what it is. But, you know, we're coming into the best season for the shoe, st shoe business. Between now and Christmas, people buy a lot of shoes. 29 to 197. So I, I'm still very, very um, 
bullish on shoe carnival i don't think you're going to make it you know it's not going to it's not going to it's not a change your life stock but it's not a bad one not a bad one at all and i think having retail exposure i've done actually very well in the last few months in retail and one of my best ones has been has been macy's so this is not a bad area to be in uh also nike uh is doing well of course that's not a retailer but they are a semi-retailer because they are selling some on some 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 uh, uh some of their shoes online but shoe carnival this one looks very good and it is actionable i do think that you could buy it it's right below this this cup 39.90 buy point it's 37.88 so it's one dollar below the buy point so i definitely think this is actionable here uh shoe carnivals scvl let's look at xec <coughs> excuse me xec and yeah, looks at that yeah. Uh, okay. The, uh, this is the oil company. And another, you know, these oil companies are sort of coming back. I did have this, as you can see, I, sh I sold out my, uh, when it pulled back, I sold out, uh, but it's starting to make another move. Really the buy point on this one on a consolidation base, 76.39. And currently we're at 69. So we're, we're, we need to get a little bit more strength in this thing, but it definitely, it just, it's looking pretty good with the price of oil. Earnings were up sharply. 610 percent let's kind of look there yeah sales were up 186 percent but the but the but the um the um uh, the earnings were up 610 percent of course last year and that's why this has this little this little hash thing here the this they, they were in a loss in this quarter but this quarter they have done well and of course the quarter before that they were up 241 percent so this is not looking bad <coughs> This one is not looking bad either, but I would probably, instead of Cinemax uh, uh, Energy, I'd probably go for the Denbury Research because that one is set up and it's just a little bit more quality than the other ones. So, uh, but, they're up, but, they're, but it's that, oh, that one's good. Cinemax Energy is very good. Let's look at BL. Let's quickly at BL. Um, black Line. Okay. And this is a software. Okay. Oh, okay. So this is accounting. Uh, accounting server. I'm not familiar with this company, and I would you would think I would know this, but uh, well, there's a fair amount of short interest on this one, so you got to be a little bit careful. Okay, um, 43 relative strength. It's below the 200-day line. You know, I probably would not buy this one. Uh, probably watch list on this one. I just want to kind of do a little bit more of the smell test here. Yeah, 56 relative strength. I just don't think this one is 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 what you want to do. Uh, you know, I don't think it's, I don't think it's the one you want to do. You might want to watch list this one though. Uh, you know, that might not be a bad idea, but I think that for this one black line, I think you're going to have to, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be in this one, by the way. Um, just wanted to point out, to, uh, for our, everybody out there, we have a free action trade alerts, uh, list. And I think we're, we're going to send out, we may be sending out the ready list. That'll probably come out today or tomorrow the ready list um but uh, i just wanted to if if you're on the list uh i just want to make sure that everybody is on the list so they get you know, this is the free component of the of, of dallas trading floor but let's um you know this is not the this is not the discord room but that's available as well um but this one is the um you know this one's the action trade alert so to get on the action trade alerts if you're looking right now on youtube or or um linkedin or uh, you know, possibly uh, Periscope or some of the other uh, other places that we broadcast. It's easy to get on that free action trailers list. All you do is you just go to www Dallas Trading Floor. Now, if you are looking on uh, TikTok, it's even easier. Just go to my profile, click that link, first last name and an email address, and we'll get you right on that list um, for those uh, for for the ready list. These are stocks that are ready to go that you want to kind of watch to see if they move. And um, and uh, we're probably going to be putting out that list tonight um, for everybody that's on the action trade alerts. All right, um, let's go to the next question. Uh, we did Palantir. Uh, what do you think about Uber? Okay, that's I haven't looked in on Uber in a while, probably in about a month or two. So let's look at Uber. U R B R. And uh, oh, is that right? U no, it's U B E R. There we go. Uber. <laughs> there we go. 
Okay. Uber is right now, as we speak, and let's kind of zoom in a little bit on that. I'm going to just kind of zoom on and see, see everybody can see this at home. There we go. Unfortunately, Uber, as you can see, is in this downward trend. I'm not liking that. Oops. I'm also not liking the fact that it's, 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 it's but this is a downward trend for Uber. So I'm not as interested in Uber right now. It is, it is, it is trending down and it is below this very key, um, this, this very key line here. I kind of drew it kind of, it kind of messed up there a little bit, this 200 day line. So here's the thing with Uber. It's got a relative strength of, um, of 11. I just probably would not be a, a buyer for Uber right now. Uh, I'll, I'll take the Uber's um, ride share all day long, but I probably would not be buying their stock just because it doesn't look as compelling as it needs to be uh, for, you know, for me to really get in it. Um, it's got a relative strength of 11. I just, that's not good enough for me. Um, it's got a 56 checklist. Again, not good enough for me. So I, you know, I think it's a good time to take an Uber. I don't think it's a good time to buy an Uber. <laughs> I don't think it's a good time to be buying Uber. So it's a it's a good uh, it, you know. So that's sort of my take on it. But I appreciate that, Hussein. Um, I, I do appreciate I do appreciate that. Uh, Uber, I think really, yeah. I just think I just th I just think we're going to have to stay away from it at least for a while. And let's take a look at uh, MRO. This is I think Marathon. Now this is an integrated oil company, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Marathon Oil. This is an integrated oil company and it is not the what I was talking about earlier was Denbury Resources DEN. That is not an integrated oil company. It's an ENP company. They're the ones that actually go out and drill for the oil. Now Denbury has a lot of um, you know a lot of a lot of plants, but they're mostly on shore, which makes them cheaper to drill, places like the Permian, those kind of places. So um, Marathon Oil is a bigger company and it's sort of a it's sort of an integrated company they do they do have gas stations and i guess i mean they may have sold off their gas stations but they have retail and they have uh refining i believe based in houston um you know some very nice numbers on them but um you know i think it's really not where the action is interestingly enough this is a very inexpensive stock 1172 i kind of want to show look back at the monthly chart you know this had such a drawdown it was amazing it went from about a 50 dollar 45 dollar stock all the way down. The question is, can you buy it at these levels? Well, you know, it might be an interesting buy starting at about 14. Okay. And I kind of want to show you that, but I want to see it bounce and see it move over 14. So here's what I'm going to do on this. I'm going to set an alert on this line. And, and the reason I'm going to set an alert on this line is because this is kind of where it needs to come and show some strength. And then if it does, then, uh, you know, I think it might be, might be worthwhile taking a look at um, it's relative strength rating of 86, which is good. Uh, let's take a look at some of the other criteria on it. This, the checklist is actually excellent with 78. So the only thing it's really, really failing on here is the earnings per share. It's, it is not, you know, it's not in the top eight, uh, 20%. We'd like to see it there. And it's also uh, quite a bit off of its former all time high. So this is an interesting stock. It's, uh, you know, I wouldn't say it's a real, um, oil and gas integrated companies, this is what I was talking about. This is one of the worst performing sectors right now, 172 out of 179. But you know what? Th if this turns around, this could be a good sector. There's a lot of stocks in this sector, but I want to see who the leaders are. So let me go to that. It's 172. So let's let's see if I can bring up that sector of the economy. Uh, this is the sector of the, 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 the stock market. So it's one uh, it's 172 on that. So I'm gonna I'm going to look at the rank. Here, I'm going to rank them, and I'm going to go down to 172. There we go. And, of course, this is the group, the oil and gas integrated group, the, the, the entire group. So I want to kind of see what stocks are the top ones. And interestingly enough, wow, this is very interesting. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have thought this. The number one company in this area, Gazprom, of course, that is the Soviet, I mean, Soviet, excuse me, Russian company. I, I, I misspoke myself. <laughs> That's the Russian company. Both both gas proms are in there. Marathon is in there as well. That is so interesting. That is so interesting. Now, interestingly enough, gas prom is very close to its all-time high. I want to take a look at gas prom. <laughs> I have not been following the stock. 
look at this. It's an $8 company. This is called Gazprom. This is one of the biggest companies in the world in terms of the oil business. I don't know if I'd be, I, I'd be a little bit scared buying this one, um, you know, just because it is Russian. I'm not very familiar with Russian stocks. Um, but, you know, this is interesting. Um, so Marathon, yeah, I mean, you definitely could. It, you can see that it's it's just above the buy point. This is Gazprom here. So very, very interesting, 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 interesting. That's a, that's an interesting thing. So that's kind of a side note there. So, but uh, it uh, it doesn't look bad. I mean, the only um, uh, 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 marathon looks pretty darn good. So I think you could probably, if you have a position, you could probably double up on it as well. So, um, oh, hey, great, man. Hey, Jim, uh, just an update. I made 10 bucks so far on my Palantir calls. Good for you, man. Good for you. You know, I don't think that's about I don't. I don't think that's about it. I think Palantir is basing, and I think it's probably going to go higher. So I think you're going to do very well on that. Um, yeah, that's exciting. That's, 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 that's definitely exciting. So fantastic. Good for you, man. Good for you on that. Well, I'm in about an hour. I don't think I got to all the, Let's see if I got to get one or two more um stocks here let's see um okay oh what do you think about asset i want to show i want to talk about this one this is american american um sorry academy sports and outdoors this is actually i know this this company really well because i have shopped here <laughs> at academy sports academy sports believe it or not is buyable right at this moment unbelievable it's still in the buy zone the buy point on it 42.75 and it does look pretty darn good. I mean, uh, this this looks like a good stock. Yeah, they just re no. Oh, I'm sorry. We can't buy ASO right now. <laughs> Why? Because it's only seven days in front of earnings. So you want to watch this this one. Uh, even though this is a good stock, it looks like a very good stock. I would not buy this into earnings. Wait for it to come through earnings. So here's what I'd recommend: watch this ASO. It's a great stock. But let's come. Let's see. It comes through earnings. See how see how it does through earnings, and I think you might have a winner. But right now, don't buy ASO. Wait seven days until it comes through earnings. Well, thank you very much, everybody, for taking a look. Um, if you want to get on the the uh, action trailer, it's very, very easy to do. If you're watching on YouTube or on LinkedIn or uh, something like that, just go to, uh, just go to www www.dallastrading4.com. So that's how you get on the action trailers. We're probably going to be putting out the um, the ready list tonight. Um, so if you're on there and we should be able to get that out to you, uh, tonight. So www Dallas trading floor. So I'll be back tomorrow. That'll be the last day this week. And then I won't be back until Tuesday of next week, because of course we're going to have the labor day. Um, you know, we're going to have the labor day holiday. So I won't be, um, I, I, I won't be back until Tuesday, but Tuesday at about two forty central standard time, that's the time I'll be back uh, on the show. And thank you, everybody, for taking a look at the show. And please tell your friends about us. Please like us. <laughs> please like if if you're watching us on um, if you're if you're watching us on YouTube. Please like us, like like like, and also smash that button and subscribe and all that good stuff that they everybody tells you to do. And I'm telling you to. So, but please do that. That really helps me out um, to to make this show possible. Until. Uh, tomorrow at 2.40. Happy trading.